Hey students, welcome back to physics. This is going to be uh, section 2.3 of our lesson today. And I got Beethoven with me to help me out to learn a little physics together. So last time we talked about average velocity. Remember the average velocity was the total distance over the entire time you were traveling. So our last problem was a runner runs from 50 meters and runs to 30.5 meters on the field over the course of three seconds. So we, the way that we got the average velocity of the total distance and time was we, we added up those two values, which was negative 19.5 meters. Remember, it's going in the, uh, the down direction to the left, the opposite direction. And we divided that by the time it took, which was three seconds, and we had a negative 6.5 meters per second. Now, that's the average of the whole three seconds. What would happen if you wanted to know the velocity at one moment was called the instantaneous velocity? What was the velocity at a particular moment or second or fraction of a second? So that's what we're going to learn about today is what's called instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity, as your book says, is, is an object, is the velocity at any given moment or time. So if the object is moving with a constant velocity, this is the key part, it's moving constant, it's not changing speed, it's not uh, slowing down or speeding up, there's no acceleration or deacceleration, which we'll learn about in a few lessons. Um, if we have an average, a constant velocity, then the instantaneous velocity, the average velocity and the constant velocity are the same. That makes sense. If you're going a constant velocity, you're gonna average the same. So if you travel, from point A to point B at going at 10 meters per second and you never change, you never speed up or slow down, your average velocity is gonna be, your constant velocity are all gonna be the same. So if you take a measurement at any point, you'll be the same. But if you're typically like you're driving or you're running, you're gonna slow down, speed up based on the terrain or how tired you might feel or the stop signs or things like that if you're driving in a car. So how do we find a velocity at a particular moment in time? And that's called a position versus time graph, okay? And this is what those are. So I'll explain, I'll start with the graph here and then we'll go over to this data set that makes up the graph. So on the graph, typically we're gonna have time on the x-axis in seconds. So here we start at zero seconds would be our initial time or time zero. And we run this out and we it goes for six seconds. And then the position in meters as this objects begins to move as time progresses the object is moving farther away from its starting point so it makes sense if it's a constant velocity that this is going to be a straight line here because the velocity has not changed so the data points that have gone in to make this line graph are right here so at time zero or the initial time that you started before you started the clock you were at position zero you have not moved yet then after one second, you've used you've moved 80 meters in your car. After two seconds, you've used you've moved 160. Three, 240, four, 320. So you'll notice each time if you subtract the the, the uh, second one from the first one, that's 80. If you subtract the third data point from the second data point, that's 80. Each time the delta or the change in position from each one of these points is 80 meters means means that you're going a constant velocity you're going the same amount of distance per unit time so it makes sense that you would have a straight line okay so that is what so the velocity is going to be the slope okay so but what happens if you accelerate now here we have a constant velocity here in blue okay and to know what that velocity is you would take the slope the y over x, remember this from your algebra class, the uh, slope of a line is the change in y over the change in x. Well, remember velocity is the change in distance, your y, over your time, x. So really just, if you wanted to know the velocity, the average velocity, you would just take the slope of that line, change in y, distance, over the change in x, time. But what happens if you accelerate? Now, if you accelerate, which means you're going to cover more ground, if you press the accelerator, so you're starting here, you're, say, at time zero, you're at 100 meters away, then suddenly you press the gas pedal. 
and, or you start running faster or pedaling faster on your bike, you're going to cover more ground over a shorter distance. Okay, you're going to over a shorter time period. So that's what's called accelerated motion. The velocity is constantly changing. The, and the graph is going to be a curved line because you're increasing, you're traveling more distance, a steeper slope over at the same interval of time. So if you look here, you traveled from, from, let's say, from four seconds to five seconds. On the constant velocity, you went from roughly 200 to about 250. Okay, so you went from 200 meters and you traveled about 50 meters in that one second, right? Okay, but from here, you went from at four seconds, you went from about 250. In that same second, you went up to 400. So you traveled about 150 meters in that same second, okay, because you're accelerating. Now, this is the reason calculus was invented by Sir Isaac Newton and, other, and other scientists and mathematicians, is it's almost using normal algebra and slope, calculating the slope of a curved line at any distance at a very, very small instantaneously is not impossible using algebra, okay, which is what finding a slope is. That's where calculus comes in, okay? That's where calculus, the reason calculus exists is to find answers like this. What would be the, inst the time at any instant, sub-second, very this precise down to the milli or trillions of a second? Could you find that? the velocity at that time. So that's where calculus is, is involved. We're not going to use calculus for this one. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, estimate it using a straight edge. So we would lay a straight edge on here and try to find a estimated point where that line crosses it. So for instance, let me, um, let me get out of this presentation here and show you what that might look like. So if I take a line right here and I would draw, let's, let me draw a, a line like this. And I would lay this straight edge right along our line, just like that. Okay, maybe uh, orient that a little bit. Something like that, okay. So let me get back to our presentation here. So as I have my horizontal line across here, what what is the, what is it at that exact point? Point would put a straight edge on there to estimate it. Okay, so without calculus, using our um, we would use some estimating using a straight edge, and we'll talk about this in our class time together. So that's our um, lecture for this time. That's the main um, points I want you to understand: is uh, understanding a position versus time graph and why it might be a straight line if it's a constant velocity, and why it might be a curved line if it's accelerating. And we'll learn later about deacceleration, where it might curve in the other direction. So that's it for today's lesson, and I'll see you soon.